In every sense of the word, beautiful and talented Carrie Fisher is the embodiment of a real princess. Born to Hollywood royalty, Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher, and raised in a Beverly Hills mansion, Carrie is the heir apparent to her mother's domain. As a youngster, Carrie would dig into her mother's immense wardrobe and put on backyard plays with her friends. At 13, she made her professional debut in her mother's nightclub act. But her first official act as a full-fledged Hollywood princess was a brief but stirring role in Shampoo. Following that role, Carrie got serious about her new career and attended the Central School of Speech and Drama in London. After I did Shampoo, I went to school for the two years, and I didn't think I'd... I just thought I'd never work again. Just do English rep for the rest of my life or something. Character parts. Although approached to do several films during that two-year hiatus, it was George Lucas's new adventure space fantasy, Star Wars, that really interested Carrie. She has a role that measures up to her own rich fantasy life. I play a princess who um, is, well, I'm captured, and I'm, I'm on my way with some information that uh, tells about the weakness in a, in a new complex, intergalactic complex, called the Death Star. And uh, I have to get the information to Ben Kenobi, who's the only one that can save us, otherwise they'll blow up. It can blow up entire galaxies. So I send it off in the robot, and um, they, they come and try and rescue me, because I, I tell them where I am and so on. And they do indeed blow up my, all my record collection and my, my planet. Carrie thoroughly enjoyed her new role as Princess Leia in Star Wars, and it was reminiscent of her own childhood fantasies of dressing up and backyard plays. I suppose so. There's a lot of me running around saying, here they come, you know, rescue me, and so on. And swinging across on ropes and getting blown up quite a bit and chased around. Like many of us, Carrie has been chilled and thrilled by the villainy of actor Peter Cushing in his many horror roles. In Star Wars, Carrie came face to face with the Master of Macabre as the sinister Grand Moff Tarkin, governor of the Imperial Outlands. I had to say to him, I thought I recognized your foul stench when I was brought on board. And here's a man who's a perfect gentleman. He smells like linen and lavender, you know, and you're saying, and he's the nicest man. You know, and he's playing this, this Governor Tarkin, you know, the man who's he's going to kill everybody I know. For those that are young and those that feel young, Star Wars is a comic book come to life. The lines are campy, the action rapid. It's, it, got, it gets difficult to get the words out sometimes because you're saying, you know, the plans and specifications to a battle station with enough fire, you know. And he broke at one point, he went, he said, I want to invite you to a ceremony that will make this battle station better, higher, higher, because it was getting all, you know. As a youngster, Carrie Fisher's reading interest ran more to the romantic. Her role in Star Wars was her first encounter with science fiction, and she was enthralled by the experience. I, I saw 2001, I saw, you know, various science fiction films, but I, I didn't sort of grow up with it around me. I'm afraid I never got any farther than Ray Bradbury. So I don't know if this is my first kind of intergalactic experience. We shouldn't be getting paid for it. I get to shoot a gun, I get to swing around and get handcuffed and... Who could ask for anything more? Our interview sketch could be titled Science Fiction Revisited or Portrait of a Navy Brat. Whatever you choose to call it, it's the story of a young man whose childhood fantasy came true in a most profound way. The middle child of seven children of a U.S. Navy captain, Mark Hamill grew up with television, Japanese monster movies, and Batman comics. An amateur magician, his greatest trick was his ability to make his brothers and sisters disappear by offering up a magic trick. He could pour milk in a rolled up newspaper and make it ruin the rug. His greatest ambition was to be an actor in a science fiction movie, but the closest he came to being one was in front row seat at a movie house. That is until writer-director George American Graffiti Lucas cast a virtual unknown Mark Hamill in the now highly successful science fiction space fantasy, Star Wars. It's like a dream come true, because I'm very, I've always been interested in fantasy and, and science fiction and comic art and whatever. I would think that, that some of the early science fiction films I saw when I was a kid really made me interested in the movies, seeing fantasy and seeing fairy tales happen on the screen, you know, really incited me to go on and figure out what it was all about, you know, and I was always interested in movies as a kid. It's a great, it's just like, you know, I find myself 
I, I'm so thrilled. I mean, I think, gee, I'm getting paid for this. I'm getting paid for playing cowboys and Indians in my backyard. I've been doing this for years. Um, my parents had given all hope up for me, you know. But now, here I am doing this. What Mark is doing is fulfilling his one lifelong fantasy. He's Captain Midnight, Batman, and the Green Lantern rolled into one. In Star Wars, he's the ultimate hero, Luke Skywalker. Well, he's uh, 19, and he works on a desert planet, Tatooine, which is all desert, and, and their business is, is operating these mechanical things that absorb vapors and water and moisture. I mean, for miles in every direction is just nothing. And one by one, all of his school friends are going off to join the Star Wars. And um, I keep staying on another season, another season, you know. And of course, at that age, you think, gee, I'm getting, I'm over the hill before I'm 21. And he, basically, what happens is through uh, a twist of fate, he's able to go out and, and uh, participate fully and be very important in the, in the outcome. And uh, I does a lot of growing up along the way. He's just kind of a, your average farm boy, you know, not superior intellectually, a little more athletic than... I mean, he's willing to jump into danger because he doesn't see it's there. It's just, hey, let's go. Actually, when you see the way I am heroic, it's... I'm, very, I'm a very lucky kid, you know. I'm not exactly Errol Flynn, you know. But... Uh, through uh, luck and a little bit of skill and help from friends, as usual, the, the good guys win. Mm -hmm. All the people in the white hats are, are winners in this movie. We, we just point at the bad guys, fire once, and 40 of them fall down. Actually, Mark Hamill's true life hero is the man he was lucky enough to play opposite in Star Wars. My mother had two favorites when I was little, Jack Lemmon and Alec Guinness, and although they really didn't take me to the movies often, if there were one of the, if there was an Alec Guinness comedy playing, and I was living in a military base where you get old movies on a big screen, I saw all those, Lavender Hill Mob and uh, The Lady Killers. My favorite, one of my favorite farces in movie history is The Man in the White Suit. Um, I always wanted to meet him, see him on stage or something and now to be working with him again. It's like if I dreamed up the perfect job, it would be in a big romantic space opera with Alec Guinness. Remember the stories of actors and actresses being discovered in drugstores and department stores and then being rocketed to stardom? Well, the Hollywood story still lives in the form of Harrison Ford. Harrison, known as Carpenter to the Stars, is a professional carpenter plying his trade amongst his fellow actors and the studios. Although he starred in George Lucas's American Graffiti, Harrison returned to carpentry after the picture, taking occasional roles in television like Gunsmoke and Ironside. It was a chance happening that his friend George Lucas, now director-writer of Star Wars, passed by the doorway of a casting office that Harrison was hammering on and immediately signed Harrison to a starring role in his new picture. It was a case of being at the right place at the right time. I have a lot of respect for George. I have a lot of respect for uh, his vision and for his uh, technical capacity. I think he makes good movies. Prophetically and all pun intended, Harrison Ford will truly be rocketed to stardom as the dashing starship captain Han Solo. Well, the character is described in the script as a pirate extraordinaire. He's kind of an outlaw, becomes involved in this idealistic odyssey with the with the kid and the princess and the sage old warrior and uh, his function is to be so, a sort of a, a counterpoint to the idealism of the princess and the kid Harrison is not a by chance actor he is a steady professional who's used his carpentry trade as a means of survival while waiting for film roles well I started out in summer stock um, and did several productions in the Midwest before I went to Hollywood. I mean, I, I started carpentry because uh, it's the only thing I had the clothes for. Although Harrison has appeared in a number of television shows and motion pictures and is completely at home on the set, he was still awed by his experience in Star Wars. Well, it made me quite nervous at first when I, when I began to think about it, that I would be appearing in scenes with... Alec Guinness, but uh, he's so 
charming and workmanlike that it's really, it's proved to be no problem at all. Star Wars introduces such colorful characters as 3PO, R2-D2, Chewbacca, Red Leader, General Tag, and many more. It also introduces three actors with a star-crossed destiny of international stardom, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and Harrison Ford. I would like very much just to hang up my hammer. That's uh, a minute to hang up my hammer. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't all, at all mind the, the opportunity to work more and to have a greater choice in what I did do. Like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Stan Laurel, Alec Guinness is the most studied comedic actor of our time. For these are the innovators, unique talent that comes along once in a lifetime. Unlike Chaplin, Keaton, and Laurel, who work from a single character, Alec Guinness is a many-faceted actor who can develop serious as well as comedic characters. He is the ultimate actor. In his latest motion picture, Star Wars, he brings yet another character to the screen, Ben Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's a sort of um, a cross, I mean, a sort of wise man, some warrior in outer space at some time or other who's been on the run and then hiding in the desert from his enemies, but has a lot of knowledge about life and about space, presumably, a kind of sort of mystical character in a way, who's raked into the story to assist the young people. I think he's meant to suggest a kind of jump ahead in his imagination or in his awareness of what's going to happen. Alec Guinness also found the working environment of Star Wars highly motivating. We did um, location work in Tunisia in the, on the edge of the Sahara on some of these extraordinary salt flats which stretch for a hundred miles. Well, they virtually, I mean, you know, if you've gone to the Sahara, it stretches for 3,000 miles. And there's a great feeling of strange, flat space. And, but it's genuine space. It's real and gritty. And also shots in canyons in the sandstone hills, which are very dramatic to look at. But you feel it, it's real. It's not um, it's not some made-up world. It was George Lucas's name on the Star Wars script that tempted Guinness's consideration. I was in Hollywood making a movie called Murder by Death uh, with David Niven and Peter Sellers and various friends of mine. And on my second from last day, a script arrived on my dressing table uh, and I saw it was going to be directed by George Lucas. Now, George Lucas I knew about because of American graffiti, which I admired very much. And so I was immediately excited. When I opened it and I saw science fiction, I thought, oh, Lord, I've never done a science fiction. I've seen one or two and quite enjoyed them, but always thought they were a bit cardboard in, from an actor's point of view. But because of Lucas, I started reading it, and then I found myself involved. There was an excitement in the script. I mean, I wanted to turn each page to know what happened next. I mean, very much so. I wanted to know the storyline, but I also wanted to know each uh, little incident, how it was concluded. I, I found a, a carrying forward. I mean, like reading a, a novel, which you don't want to put down. American graffiti was drawn from George Lucas's youth, teenage cruising in his hometown, Modesto, California. Star Wars is Lucas's youthful affair with comic book heroes, a fantasy revisited. The ultimate actor discusses the ultimate writer-director. It, it all stems from George Lucas's imagination, and I have a great admiration for him. Somehow a kind of taste that he has. His eye is a very true, pure eye, and I, I trust that, and I trust his little things. I've heard him hesitate over saying yes or no over a look in the, someone's eye or something he hears. He, he can't yet say, do it like this or don't do it like that. I don't think. But he, you, he's kind of like, um, what? I mean, he's like a sort of litmus paper there. You judge off him very well as to what's going on. He has a total passion for what he's doing. I mean, I've never 
don't think I've ever come across anyone so immersed in film. I'm, I, I have an idea it goes to bed in it, wrapped up in it, you know, the actual material. The Star Wars films are basically silent movies, and they're designed as silent movies. Therefore, the music carries a, has a very large role in carrying the story, more than it would in a normal movie. Most movies, the story is carried by the dialogue. Star Wars films, the, mu the music carries the story. So that the music is extremely important. 